Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Calvin Lim Investing. And today we just got a really cool and quick segment for you guys. Um, I'm going to be talking about the six stocks that I'll be watching this week and sort of my charting analysis and what I plan to do with these stocks. So with that being said, if you could scroll down, smash the like and subscribe button, I definitely really appreciate it. Next of all, remember to always do your own research and do diligence before you begin to invest. Everything that I talk about here today is um, is going to be my opinion as well as researched backed opinions. So there's always no guarantee that a stock or a ticker is going to go up or down. So remember, always do your own research and speak to an advisor if you're really serious about investing. All right, with that being said, today we're going to take a look at six tickers. They're going to be Tesla, Apple, Neo, Airbnb, Overstock, and Boeing. I'm going to go through them rather quickly with some charting analysis and try to see or try to give you an idea of what kind of play and I'm going to be uh, looking at. So the first one's going to be Apple. Um, we have Apple right here. You can see that it's been trading at a little bit of a downward zone that has nice support right here. So this is, let's scroll out, let's do the hourly. I'm on trading view, let's do the hourly. So in the last, about ever since mid-April, this has held up pretty well. So I'm going to draw, let's see. Uh, eh. we'll, try to, we'll draw this line right here. All right, and then this was the top, and then it's going right there. You see, it's it's a little bit of a wedge, right? But if you look closer, and you don't take this mark, you take this. Uh, you can even take this one right here. It definitely makes it a lot more promising. You know, you get rid of this. You see right here, it's kind of trading as a narrowing channel. If it breaks above maybe 126, it has a chance to run uh, and fill this gap all the way to 130. Or if it falls below, it could really break down. So this is kind of like going to be a battleground for, for Apple. Um, it's tested that low 123, 124 area a couple of times. So um, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on Apple, seeing where it goes. It feels like there is, let's see. It feels like this could be kind of the the top right here one two three almost touches it here so it feels like this could be the top if it breaks that it's gonna run to, to the 130s so that's what I have so far for Apple um, in my opinion I wouldn't trade weeklies on Apple or weekly options uh, I could do shares or I could do longer dated calls and with that being said I definitely do suggest uh, playing longer data calls versus weeklies if you are going to swing trade. The uh, the next ticker that I have is going to be Tesla. <clears throat> so Tesla, again, this is going to be the hourly in the last about month and a half. Um, the trend doesn't look that great, right? You can see. It follows this line almost perfectly. And then you have this one right here, right? And it, to me, it feels like this 570, 580 is, or right here, this 560 is definitely a really strong level support because it bounces a couple times right here. This was, I feel like this was an anomaly. But um, Tesla's kind of trading in the middle of this channel. If it breaks, you know, above uh, above here, maybe in the 615 range, it could definitely run all the way back up to, to something in these areas. So for Tesla, I did buy 100 shares at $590 per share. Um, and in my opinion, I think the best way to play, to play Tesla calls be to buy calls on Thursday and Friday when premiums are relatively cheap compared to Monday and Tuesday. Um, premiums are pretty expensive for Tesla, so I do try to avoid playing Tesla the first couple days of the week because 
One of my favorite strategies is to grab in the money calls and uh, options closer to the money. I don't really like to grab things far out of the money. I've been burned multiple times. So I do like to grab options closer to the money. So one plan is if, if Tesla's still trading around $600 on Thursday or Friday, I'm going to grab that $600 strike or that $590 uh, strike for Tesla for this week. So the next stock I'm going to be looking at is going to be NEO. Ironically, they're also an EV company. And uh, so NEO has a very interesting chart. You can see that there's a little bit of a top right here. Uh, this is like a top right here. And then this, I guess, if you want to put it. But uh, they've also had a bottom right here, about $30 right and neo is trading in a really weird channel um i think if it breaks this top we can see it run if it doesn't it can fall back down i think 43 to 44 dollars is going to be a very important side for neo it hasn't reached uh it hasn't really broken uh the 45 dollar range since uh early march and you know there was a big uh, a big dip right but right now it looks like it's trading in a relatively nice channel in the last month it's that low and it's slowly grinding and melting up um, you can see that right here it's if you do it like this it has been trading in a pretty you know solid channel right so it's it's following this little bit of pattern, and I think that if it hits 43 to 44, you might see a pushback to, to $50 for uh, for NEO. So NEO options are relatively cheap. Um, shares are also good as well. If you do plan on buying calls, I, I would suggest going a month or two months out. Um, I think June and July are going to be pretty good for the market. August might be a little bit flat. So, you know, you can plan ahead and, and pick up calls for for. Um, early July or middle of July. Uh, I wouldn't go all the way far as August or September. If you are really bullish on NEO, I could go next year for leaps, which are longer dated options with at least, you know, three to six months um, of time premium left or of time left. I One option I have been thinking about is picking up some 2023 calls that are deep in the money. Um, the time premium for those are, are not too bad, but... Um, at this moment, I am holding a couple hundred shares of NEO that I grabbed way back before they broke uh, 10 and $15. So I will be holding these shares, but I, I am also looking to pick up a couple of calls for, uh, for NEO. The next stock I have on this list is going to be Airbnb, one of my favorites. Um, I've played them multiple times in the last six months, and they've done pretty well. This chart does not look great at all. Um, they almost fell back to their their IPO date dip, but luckily it kind of held up a little bit. Um, so looking at this chart, and then near or in the last a couple of times, I guess the top would be this 152 mark. It breaks up, has room to go up. Um, also looking at this, you can see a slight uptrend there. as well as you know another another one here they both you can both see that it's been um, getting what is it higher lows even with this dip it didn't dip all the way back down to the 140s so you know I if um, Airbnb follows this pattern I think we're gonna see a bounce back to the 170 180 range um, I am pretty bullish on Airbnb because travel is coming back this summer. Um, if this line holds and if there's only a dip to about 146 or if it keeps going up, I'm definitely going to buy calls, long dated calls, probably something for July. Um, I do like that 140, 145 strike because they are in the money. Um, as I said, my plan doesn't usually involve me picking up uh, far out options. All right. So. That's kind of one of my game plans. 
So, you know, this is kind of what I see. I think, you know, if it breaks above this, you might see a, a really solid run. So I am going to be trying to time that perfectly with Airbnb. Um, I did buy shares in the beginning at the 120 area. And then I did sell, I didn't sell at the top, but I did sell in the, the low 200 to 195 range. Um, and then I bought, re I recently bought back at 130 of, uh, of shares. And I also bought a couple of calls and I sold out uh, kind of close to this peak. I sold out around 150. So I will be looking to re-enter and, and trying to play Airbnb again. So again, remember, if you're going to play Airbnb, make sure to grab calls that are at least three weeks a month out instead of uh, instead of picking something up for the weekly because you know this trend has been looking pretty nice but uh, you want to be a little bit more careful and I, and I prefer to play longer dated calls all right the next stock I have is going to be OSTK it's going to be overstock.com um, they're at a really nice pattern as of late as well you can see that it dipped all the way down to 55 dollars right Dipped all the way down right here, and it's just been on a monster tear, right? Like, it's just been on a monster tear. Look at look how nice this chart looks. This looks perfect, you know. If it comes down here, and it goes breaks up. If it breaks above the this about ninety five dollar range, you can see it, you know, really really bouncing. There's there hasn't really been any uh, resistance. You know, every time it hits a top, it really falls dramatically. So we haven't any seen any solid level of resistance. Um, it's been building. Uh, it's kind of been building lower lows, except for here, and it's been building higher highs. So this channel does look very interesting. And if it breaks above out of this channel, I will look to grab some OSTK shares or calls for a quick swing. Uh, Again, OSTK probably has some pretty expensive premiums, so I will be sure to grab something a couple weeks out in the money versus something out of the money, just so that it's relatively safer, in my opinion. And that's kind of the plan I have for OSTK. This is a really nice chart. Um, I really like where it's going. You know, this channel is pretty clear cut. So if it breaks out of that, I'll definitely use that as my signal to enter. And as usual, I will always monitor the, uh, the call volume, see if there's any unusual flow coming in for OSTK. All right, the last ticker we have today is going to be Boeing, the Boeing company. So Boeing looks like, or before we look into the technical analysis portion of it, um, Boeing should have a pretty good summer with travel returning full steam. As you know, travel was hit in a crazy way and Boeing took a massive hit uh, during COVID and they started to recover. There have been a lot of airline order cancellations, but you know, I believe that Boeing is on the way back up to, uh, to a good spot. With that being said, the stock has done really, really well since its dip. Um, and I do see that Boeing is going to be making a move in the near future. With that said, I have, let's see. So you see this, it broke out of this trend and it ran, right? So it, it, it broke out of that trend and it ran. So you can see this is like a little wedge. It broke above it and it really ran. And then if you look farther out, right, this still adds up. Um, and this is the COVID drop. So there really isn't any uh, resistance, you know, up here, right? If, if, uh, if Boeing pushes above this 257, um, well, there is one level of resistance that you could use. It's going to be this 260 range right it's hit that uh once almost right here almost right here you know it's it's like the 259 if it breaks above that you know you can see boeing go in another tier 
and if it breaks above this 278 I think we could see a fill all the way up to 300 so definitely a lot of potential here um, Boeing should have a wild summer as travel recovers and I think that Boeing would be a really good stock to buy uh, shares with versus calls. You are going to have to be a little bit patient with uh, with Boeing because it is going to take some time for it to break back above 300 and 340. But I do see it popping up to, to these levels right here, pre-COVID levels in the near future. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. These are just the six stocks that I'm going to be looking at for next week. And, and trying to uh, to time my entry and exit levels. So hope you enjoyed this charting video and understanding my game plan and uh, feel free to scroll down, smash the like and subscribe button and I hope to see you guys around.